All right, go ahead. I'd like to call uh, to order this meeting of the L Livingston Parish Ordinance Committee meeting today, March 24th, 4.30 p.m. at the council meeting. Miss Sandy, would you call the roll to make sure we have a quorum, please? Mr. Wasson? Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Talbert? Here. Mr. Mack? Here. All right, if you, I, I'm going a, I'm to a check my phone real quick just to make sure it don't go off in the middle of this meeting so I don't y'all don't have to hear that um, I, f first item we got a couple I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a few changes I'm gonna pull item 4c up into um, into old business uh, like uh, make it 4d so but real quick I think we can go through we've got a lot to cover tonight so um, I was just gonna try to <clears throat> go through most of these things the first thing is under old business it's the uh, ordinance adopting uh, 2022 redistrict, redistricting plan for the parish council. And each one of you have should have a copy. And we've had the maps in the back uh, put together. Mr. Cedric, I thought, was going to be here tonight. He is, okay, well, and when he gets here, uh, but we've all looked at the maps, and I, I think we pretty much all agree there's a copy of all nine districts with the voting precincts there. Um, and these four members, I believe, have looked at them. I just think it'd be good if we just send, uh, go ahead and approve this as an ordinance committee because it's going to come up tonight at the parish council meeting. So it's just good that we send a recommendation in favor of. So I'd like to just move. Make a motion. Uh, I, 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 I'm actually, I guess, the only fortunate one where my district didn't change at all. Motion by Mr. Talbert. I mean, motion by Mr. Garlinghouse. I'll second. Second by Mr. Gary Talbert. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? That item carries. Uh, the next item on old business is uh, hopefully another quick one. It's a ordinance uh, number 2203 to acquire removal property. Again, uh, th this is in uh, Mr. Sh Shane Max district. Um, ordinance number yeah, 2203 uh, for a piece of property that the parish is buying, uh, that the uh, the, the FEMA, I think, is buying back, but needs the parish's approval after flooding for uh, flood mitigation. This is in your district, I believe. Isn't it right, Shane? Yeah. Okay. So we've already talked about it in the ordinance committee and at the uh, parish council. So would um, I'd like to also send this to the parish council. Motion by Mr. Garlinghouse. Sure. Second by Mr. Talbert. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? That one carries as well. Thank you. Um, the next one is uh, again this is something that I, I'm we've already picked this one up this is under old business we talked about this uh, in depth uh, four or five or three or four ordinance committee meetings and at the last ordinance committee meeting we voted unanimously as a council to send it to the parish council um, and I it really probably shouldn't even be here tonight so we've since we've already voted to send it I'm, I'm just going to pull this one and because we're going to pick it up again tonight at the parish council and then the next item under old business is is going to bring up is number 4c this is an ordinance that mr. Gary Talbert had put together is to amend chapter 125 uh, it's regarding sub subdivision regulations and to ensure that any alterations to project designs are up to date with current standards. <clears throat> I know, <clears throat> Mr. Talbert, I, I was going to take just a moment and give you the floor to talk about what changes you've made to this ordinance and why. And I know you're good at telling people what you're going to tell them and then tell them and then tell them what you told them. So if you would just skip the two front and back and just tell us what's on this one. Uh, so if you, if you, first thing we'll talk about redefinitions that we're going to deal with Fonzie. We had used Fonzie before in, in discussing it and we, we were going to pull it a couple weeks ago Fonzie out because we didn't like the definition but we worked on the definition. The definition of Fonzie is going to be an independent report provided by a licensed engineer that has validated the drainage impact study and traffic impact study based on as built conditions and has concluded that the project as designed will pose no additional negative impacts on the surrounding community. And I had a discussion, you know, with, with a few engineers. They felt that that thing was redundant because Fort DeBlada was used. And I said, Fort DeBlada verifies the information given to them. They don't validate that information. 
they take the information that the engineer gives them and they say the calculations work and, and they move forward. We're asking you to validate the numbers, you know, and, and verify that these numbers are accurate that are provided and that they work and there'll be no, no impact. That, that's, all, that's all that's about. Secondly, we define lot as a parcel of ground not to exceed a density of two per acre. There's been some discussion about wanting to restrict lot size. And then some discussion with some developers, like why do you want to restrict the lot size? Density is what we're worried about. We're worried about how many cars are coming out of a piece of property on a piece of land. Or how much of a land, how much of a piece of land is being developed and we're gonna, you know, take away grass as previously absorbed water or whatever. So if the market dictates that we have 55 foot lots, let the market dictate what size the lots are. But we can we can restrict the density and, and, and accomplish the same thing. There was somebody said we need to have half acre lots. Well, typically to do a half acre lot if you're on depth, you look in 80 or 90, you know, linear fit, you know, wide. So why not just say we're gonna we're gonna net two lots per acre in the development? Meaning that if you got a hundred acres, you can have two hundred lots. I don't care what size they are. You're maxed out at two hundred lots. Push push it down there. <clears throat> You're maxed out at two hundred lots. That's I mean that's what's important. Is is density. It's not about the size of the lots, it's not about the width of the lots, it's about the density of the piece of land development. And then third, we're gonna, we're gonna, there was a section that talked about under construction. We're gonna say under construction for the purpose of these regulations means the ODS has signed construction plans. The previous definition said under construction for the purpose of this regulation means any activity on property with the exception of clearing and minor ditching to drain property. In theory, you can clean it, you can clear and grub now, you know. But, but you're not supposed to work till you got signed construction plans. So we're just going to clarify that and say under construction means a set of signed construction plans. So, and the, and the reason for that clarification is part of this ordinance uh, on section 125-2 authority uh, defines that certain sections are locked in when you make a submittal. But other sections can, if the law changes during the process, uh, you can be required to meet the new new regulation as long as it's not under construction. So we just felt that under construction need to have a definitive date, and so signed construction plans would be a definitive act. What number is that? What number is that? Uh, that's just a, that's just under definitions one twenty five dash one. Okay. Just under construction for the purpose of these regulations means it, instead of any activity, we're saying that. Construction means that you've got a set of construction plans. Uh, the next thing we change is, is 125-2 authority. We add two sections to that that can be that can be used to have a new subdivision developed under that, even if submittals have been made previously. Meaning that if you've just be, like if you've made a submittal on previous to the adoption of this ordinance in a month or whatever it is, then uh, density is not can't apply to you because you've already got a drawing. But if you're talking about the size of a retention pond, you know, and, and 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 the amount of what guideline you fall under with respect to, you know, drainage, that then this ordinance would apply because if it, you'll be up, you'll have to design to the current standard unless you've got a side of side construction board. Which the, the ordinance has said that forever. It's just we're adding two sections to it. Uh, Mr. Pack. I don't want to slow us down. Just real quick, just so I understand. Going back to the definitions where it says lot and parcel of ground not to exceed the density. Of Turn your mic on. Right. Sorry. Gary, just explain real quick lot and a parcel of ground not to exceed a density of two per acre. Okay, what so. Specifically, does that So, mean? okay, so we refer to lots. We, we talk about lots in the subdivision, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. What we're saying is that if you're developing 100 acres, mm -hmm. you got a 100 acre track that we've submitted as this new subdivision, fade track one of this subdivision, you can't have a 200 lots in it. You say that again? You can only have 200 lots. Okay. If you develop if you develop 50 acres, you can have 100 lots. If you develop 300 acres, you know, you can have, you know, what's that? 
150 lots. Basically, so 600 he's, lots. 600 he's lots. requiring 600 lots. every lot 20 lots. 10 acres, 20 lots. And, and it's, just a, it's just a situation. It's just a That's situation to address to address average. density. I mean, there, there, there's been discussion about making lots larger. Let the market determine what size people, what size lots people want to buy. We don't want to interfere with the market. What we want to, what we want to control, is the density of a development. And this is one way of this is one way of of of, of, of decreasing the density in a particular development, or, or as a piece of land is done, you know how many how many lots are on it. Does this but, also mean that this is a good dam? Half acre lot is the minimum. Size lot? Is this no, a, it, 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 doesn't, average, it doesn't reflect. It, it, the, the, it doesn't. You you can build. You can take a hundred. You can take a hundred acres mm -hmm. and put two hundred lots in sixty acres of it. As long as the other forty acres are left alone, because what we're looking for, what we're looking for, is a, a two lots an acre density. So once that hundred acres is developed. It doesn't matter if 40 of it's green space. That 40 will be green space forever because you have met the requirement. You have met the max density of that particular piece of land. That, that's all it is. So it doesn't, we don't care. I, I don't care if we build zero lot line houses. That's irrelevant. If the market dictates that, then let the market do what the market Shane, does. Shane, what, what are you saying is that it's I, I, average a half an acre. Right? Yeah, that's, what, so, that's the average. And so say you had the 60 acres left over, you wouldn't be able to go and subdivide and sell that 60 acres. You got yeah. It's going to have to be a part of the, the it's part of It's part of the original the subdivision. It's part, it's, it's part of the original subdivision meet the density. I like it. Keep going. Uh, then, then it just goes through. It just talks about you see some... Uh, you see some Fonzie, we, we need to strike eight. It's another definition of Fonzie. We're gonna take that out. So we're gonna- Eight? Eight under, under submittals. Actually, no, we're not gonna strike it. We're just gonna, we're just letting it know. We're just, we're just gonna change the definition to match the original definition. You follow what I'm saying? So we, we, when we have the list of submittals, the Fonzie's part of the submittal, but we had went with the, the on this particular printout, it's got the old definition, and we need to put a eight needs to reflect a new definition. When I was going through that, I didn't catch that one particular deal. You follow what I'm talking about? On on section 125-9 submittals under B B eight, you would have to have a font, but we have the old definition, and we need to put the new definition in. Yeah, which is underneath. It. So Fonzie, uh, uh, that I'm familiar with, required you to get tribal burial grounds and all that. No, actually, yeah. I mean, Fonzie, Fonzie, depending on depending on what federal agency in the past has asked for it, they're different. That's why we define Fonzie. Yeah, he defined we it. We went into in definitions. We define Fonzie as that's the first thing we talked about: an independent report provided by a licensed engineer that has validated the drainage impact study and traffic impact study based on as-built conditions and has concluded that the project as designed will pose no additional negative impacts on the surrounding community. So Fonzie will apply only to drainage and traffic? That's it. As it of, I mean, those are the typically... As, as it pertains to us. Yeah, yeah. those are the... That's all it does. Oh. We're just... It's, it's, it's a, Fonzie's a definition of, of, of a deal, but... But a FONSI from FEMA and a FONSI from the Hazard Medic, you know, from, from different agencies can be different things depending on what you're looking for. So, so we're defining what a FONSI is for us. And so when you introduce it, just, just make sure we got that clarified. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a, there's a, there's some bookkeeping, I mean, some a clerical to go from two year to 24 months on section 125-12. Uh, the up, next significant change is in 125-13 on under stage two, which is B1. Any alterations to preliminary plat, shans, plat plans shall be subject subject to review by the planning commission. So what we found, what we found is that they're 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 in a rush to make submittal. Sometimes they'll make a drawing, and then they they come back and want to you know add this and add that and add the other thing, and and it's been we kind of had a the definition kind of outlined a couple things and then it said significant we're just eliminating the 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 discre you know the the significant or percentage or anything yeah like we're that. just saying that if you make you make a change you're coming back 
So, so take the time, design your, design your property the way you want it initially because, because if a change is gonna bring you back to the planning commission. Um, we strike, and then we strike, uh, we strike a bunch of stuff that required, that defined what was, what brought you to a change in the future, in the past. The next, the next significant change, uh, well, no, this is a clarification on 125-23 building lines. It used to say uh, 65 foot or less was six foot, and then 65 feet or more was six foot. 23? What'd you yeah, say? Yeah, 125 23 on three on side yards. So if it was 65 foot, based, you, you know, the lot width, depending the way it was written originally, you could be six or seven. So we just struck a section out and changed it so that it clarified that. You know, at 65 and less, it is six foot, and over 65 will be seven. It was something Morgan requested that we do. Uh, and then we're striking uh, under eight. Uh, we're striking the open ditch provision uh, of a, a deal because we're we allows that we allow that now with a development where you what number is that gary h uh h under under 125.5 section h one open ditch and 125 25 we, straight 125-25 drainage impact study drainage design requirements yeah h okay okay so we we we, we strike a section out uh because later on we, we changed the ordinance and said if you net one, you could do some, you know, if you netted an acre, a lot per acre, there was some different guidelines. So we had to strike that from this part of the design. And then we get to, after that, we get to uh, under J, detention basin uh, one. Detention basin shall be designed to detain flow so as to decrease downstream runoff by 10%. For a 10-year, 25-year, and 100-year pre-development storm. Okay, I, I don't mean to go back to 125H. You talked about open ditch subdivisions. You struck the whole thing. So, what are you what are you changing? We 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 we, we gave people an incentive later on. It, we we did an ordinance earlier. This is a, it's conflicting. We, if you remember, we did an ordinance where we told people you could put open ditch subdivisions in if you netted one lot per acre. Meaning that, you know, remember we did the, the, the no gravel, no asphalt roads if you did, and no sewer if you did three lots an acre. Yes. I mean, I mean a, one lot every three acres. We did an open ditch subdivision if we do one lot every one acre. Well, this, this when we did it, there was a confliction in the thing that allowed, we, we basically were wanted our subdivision to be curb and gutter. But we left this part in there, so we're just cleaning this up. We're taking it out so that if you want to put open ditch subdivision in, you can do it. But you're putting one acre, you're going to net uh, one lot per acre, which we've already done in ordinance once already. This was just a conflict. Okay. Um, so is it is it your understanding, and I guess some, some engineers may be here as well, that curb and gutter is better at drainage than an open ditch? It's not. I don't think so. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm asking, I mean, do we want to... Do we want to remove the ability to have open ditch? Because I would think that would be better for drainage than carbon gutter. But he's saying that they're not though. But you, we, we, you still have the ability to design open ditch. We're just trying to make when you go open ditch, we're making you put larger lots in. But yet you can put a smaller, more lots, or smaller lots, and have carbon gutter. That, that don't, I, well, I, don't, I mean, I, I mean, if you go back and read this, that there is a, there is a this thing allows it to be done, but it's got to be approved. That and so I mean, look. I, uh, my question is: Should we shouldn't we encourage open ditches for drainage? I mean, I'm not saying. I mean, we, I mean, ultimately, if you think about if you think about the basis of curb and gutter, curb and gutter are designed so that the street is secondary drains. Go look at an old open ditch subdivision, and what do you typically see? The road is higher than the lots, so you create dams. You go to a curb and gutter subdivision, and the street is always lower than the house. Always, and so so this this parish has moved 
toward curb and gutter because in in in, in essence the street re- becomes the ditch the street right. becomes secondary drainage when you have an event that's large right and, and and so which presents its own problems well but if you and if you in this ordinance we're going to address that because we're going to design for a 25 year storm inside the subdivision in lieu of a 10. we currently design for a 10 year storm in a subdivision and at the same time uh we want to we want to you know retain for a 25 year so you know i'm not sure what a i'm not sure what a 10 year or a 25 year design on open ditch would look like i don't know how big those ditches would be i just know that that when when you design a subdivision for a for a you know when the road can become secondary drainage, when you have those hundred year events that you don't end up with huge ditches that you've got to address. Right. I mean, I, I mean, just, I'm just, I, look, I know. I, I mean, I, I look this, this parish, I'm not, I'm not saying good or bad in the past. We have evolved from, from open ditch subdivisions to curb and gutter with the roads being secondary. That is typically what has happened. We've gone that away, whether it's better or worse. I, I'm, I don't know. I mean, uh, anyway, go ahead. I, but but I, I just, that's that's what that's what that's about. And maybe that's, somebody else and that's, didn't like and that's not that. look. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight on this. This ordinance is it's that's a cleanup because it contradicts a part of another ordinance. That's, that's all reason that's I did. Okay, so we talked about the 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 the, uh, the detention basin shall be designed to detain flow so as not to decrease downstream so as to decrease downstream runoff by 10% for a 10 year, 25 year, and 100 year pre-development storm. <clears throat> In talking to engineers, we're gonna get, this is what we're gonna get out of that. We're gonna get, right now we're looking for a 25, we're looking for a net on a 25 year storm or a net on a 100 year storm. And, and we're not releasing it, we're not releasing it as we go. And we end up with huge culverts to, to dump water into ditches that are small. In, in talking to engineers with the way this deal is going to work, you're going to start off with a culvert, a small culvert, at the bottom of the detention pond. So as soon as it starts taking on rain, it's going to start releasing, but it's going to release at less than what a 10-year pre-runoff storm is. Then as the water builds and you get a 25-year 25, a 25 event, you have more, two larger storage. Cul- you got storage and you get two larger culverts exactly. and start releasing okay. that. Okay, okay. Because if you don't release at that point, your design for a 25 year will have your roads going underwater. You follow what I'm saying? So you got to release that. And then when you get to a 100 year event, then you can they'll release through the weir across the top. And, it'll, and they'll all be a reduction. Now, in theory, on a 100 year event, you design it to release it less than, at, with a decrease, but if it keeps raining past the hundred year event, it's just going to release over the top. There's no, there's no way to retain water past that point. So, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. typically a retention pond is it, you know, have a level, a static water level and above that static water level will be a small pipe. And then above that pipe will be two larger pipes. Then there will be a overflow some, there. Will, yeah. Then there will be, there will be some ground and then there will be a flat weir on the top. And basically what will happen is as it starts raining and the water starts growing, it will release out a small pipe. And then as the water, as the rain event becomes larger, it will start releasing at the 25 year. And then if it goes to 100 year, release at 100. But once it gets through releasing, it becomes slower on the way down. What we're seeing now is these retention ponds are emptying themselves pretty quickly. And so, you know, it doesn't, we don't, we don't slow the flow of water down like we can. So that's the kind of the point of this, okay. is, to, is to do that. Uh, two, the tension basin shall be checked for the 10 year, 25 year, and 100 year frequency to ensure that capacity is provided in the basin and the outlet to prevent flooding of upstream and downstream developments. The next significant impact is uh, K, it says expiration. Drainage impact studies are applicable for 24 months from the date performed. Resubmitted drainage impact studies shall follow up all follow all updated design requirements and that basically is you know we're seeing developments come in with phases that might take 10 years to develop they do one drainage impact study the world changes in you know four or five years six years ten years you know and so they're building them to an old old standard so we're just going to look we're just going to say that 
you know, if you don't have a set of construction plans signed, you know, then and, and your drainage impact study runs out, you're going to have to move forward and, 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 you know, do another one. Right. Uh, mobile home, park submittals, that's any alteration, same thing. If you, if you have alteration, you got to come by. Uh, there was a, there's a deal in here, generally a waiver of drainage impact study or traffic study may be considered upon request. We're not going to let you, on a multifamily or whatever, we're not going to let you ask for a waiver. If you're, I mean, think about the density of a multifamily development. Why would you want to waive a drainage impact study on something that's got a lot more density than a, than a regular housing subdivision would be? Um, and of course, it goes back and says that uh, it goes back and says that the study's good for 24 months. Same thing on commercial, uh, and and all these things are they just we're just doing for commercial what we did for residential. We're saying that drainage impact studies good for 24 months. Uh, and you can't have anything waived, uh, you know. So uh, that, that's basically what we're talking about. So, uh, real quick, um, I'm gonna bring on, on the artist that you submitted 125-78 at the bottom in yellow. It says the drainage impact study shall expire 24 months after the date is performed. Okay, uh, so so a drainage impact. I guess let me clarify something. A drainage impact study is a is somewhat of a negotiation, John. I, I, as an engineer, I mean, I'm not an engineer. If I was an engineer, I'd do a drainage impact study. I would make submittals to the parish engineer. Right, and you don't want to wait. And, right. And she would review them, have comments. You know what I'm saying? Right. Send them back to her, to, to me. Uh, I would then answer her comments, and then she would review them. And at the time that we agreed that, you know, that I agree with what she says and she agrees what I said, uh, then the, then the, the study, clock, the the clock study starts. is complete. That's when the clock starts. Uh, and and that's, that's not what I, my question. My question was, it says the drainage impact study shall expire 24 months. Well, before I get to that, if you'll look back up on the same ordinance that, you, that you've that you redone, it says in here, uh, 125, 7, 8, in the first paragraph, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sentences down at the very, at, all the way to the end, it says paved surfaces shall be required for but not limited to. Um, we voted as a council to remove that section right there. Um, and so it, that's still in here. So if, and then I've, I've spoken with Miss Sandy, and the new one twenty chapter one twenty five doesn't have that in there. It has the changes that we made. So you, you, evidently you've drafted this one from a, from an old one. It's from the I pulled we pulled it up on Municode. Okay, well Municode must not have the updated version. Yeah, yet. so we pulled this on Municode. Okay. So I mean I'm, I mean I'm just telling you we pulled off of Municode. Okay. So if it needs to be addressed. Well, then. and we also changed on the new that hadn't been updated by Municode. We changed it from twenty four months. To 12 months that's when the clock's supposed to start um, on the no, new the approval to construct a project shall expire after 12 months unless extended by the council. that's right and so the construction part is still 12 months we didn't address that we only said that the range impact study was good for 24 months okay they're, uh, they're different okay. things okay so so Sandy so I mean we I just pulled up Unicode as it was set so if there's something in here that's different from Unicode we're gonna you'll strike it Okay, all right. So, so we, I mean, that's just the deal. So, the new one will, won't require paid for right. services. Okay. Hey, is there an engineer? Derek, come come help me. I got a question. Well, hold on. If you, before you do that, uh, and now that you've went through the ordinance, is there anybody that has anything to say regarding this that Mr. Talbert has well, spoken? Well, there was something we addressed before, and I don't see it in here now, and I might have missed it, and it might not be highlighted, so I want to I want to ask somebody something because, dude, I'm not. I mean, I... Impossible. I, it, it's it. Okay. Uh, well, that, Trey, you had a question. But like, like, like okay. There. Help me find this because I don't. I know it's in here. I just don't know where to look. And it might be since this is an abbreviated part because we just kind of pulled out what we worked on. We might have missed it going through it. The original ordinance said we design at ten year for a ten year internal design. And I think we missed it, and, we're, and I'm gonna have to find it. I'm, I'm gonna find it before, so that's all it is. But ten-year internal tender. We, we what we we did have ten year. We went to twenty-five year, and if I'm not mistaken, Billy Billy Taylor and 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 a, a developer 
did some work on some of his subdivisions that they've already done and had pre and had done and and actually ran the new ordinance on old designs to see what the impact would be. They looked at they looked at subdivisions designed under our current ordinance. Thank you, thank you. I, I, I don't understand what. Okay, so so okay so. What you're trying to say here? Okay, so let's take let's just take a subdivision. That is it is, is it in here what you're talking about? No, it's not. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So, so currently, currently we design a subdivision based on a 10-year rain event. That's what we design it for, to, to handle the water of a 10-year rain event. We retain on a 25-year retain on event, and then we look at, at the impact of 100. This new ordinance, as it's amended, we're going to design on a 25-year rain event. We're asking for a 10% reduction on a 10-year storm, 10% reduction on a 25-year storm, 10% reduction on a 100-year storm, and we're going to retain for a 100-year storm. Mm -hmm. But if we, the feeling was that if we designed for 10 and started retaining all this additional water, we might flood streets in 10. So they took, they took, they did some models of old subdivision designs and applied the new requirements tool and it works but it does need to design for 25 years on the internal part and it's not part of this piece of paper so it's we're going to change that we're from gonna, 10 to 25 yeah so so basically what i'm asking you to do is we're gonna when if we i'm asking that we add that to this thing and i will have it for the whole council in a minute we're going to go find it and we're going to add it you know what I'm saying? Okay. But basically what it says is the internal design of a subdivision will be based on a 25-year rain event. Instead of 10. Instead of 10. We had a question back here. Uh, thank you for coming and, and exp Turn your mic on there. Uh, push that button. Want the little person. Plug it in. Hard, plug it in hard, Randy. No, no, put plug. It should be wireless. It takes a second to boot up. Our new mic's awesome. I think so. Just take that one too. It just takes them a second to boot up. There, it's all. It's all. It's all. Go check it, Carol. There you go. There you go. Hi, technology. Yeah. They, uh, so, Miss Gary. Tab was talking about and explaining Billy Toder's engineer record for a lot of my projects. I was here last time. So we talked last time. There's some conditions about what would improvement because we're in, we're in favor of improving drainage. So the fact is this was proposed. The goal was how to utilize the detention ponds greater than Livingston Parish has utilized them before. So we took the current models that we have that's approved but not built. I've got projects coming up. And just an example, they have ponds that 336 pipes. By the new ordinance, it reduces it to 224s at that 10 year event, which means it retains it more. And then as you go up, it, it has a bigger wear at the 100 years. So effectively, it retains water longer. The interior designs a 25, which keeps the water surface down, which doesn't force the developer to put all the fields. You make your ponds bigger, you're going to use it on site. So if you didn't do the combination of the both, it would come to a detrimental impact long term. It doesn't get the so what's proposed here, I'm in favor of because it, it improves drainage. It gets the detention ponds to detain it longer, which is the overall design. And you're using dirt from on the on site. Yeah, you, it's the same. Yeah, 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 the, yeah, you're not, you're right. not effectively making bigger ponds the same size pipe as it was proposed last time. Uh, so that internal design allows you to keep your water service where it needs to be to make the pond function under these conditions. Uh, so to me, I think it's, it's positive like that it's an improvement because I mean literally 
you might pick a visual fruit, 36 inch pipe to fruit today. Uh, the new ordinance, I've got to make the pond a little bigger, reduce the size of the pipe to the lower Right. Level. So it, it makes sense. And they're not retaining the water then? Well, they're well, retaining it under the old ordinance. I have to decrease it under the new ordinance. I see you. Add, add a smaller storm, which means I'm releasing it out slower at the beginning. Right. So until it gets to that 20, like if we never hit a 25 year storm, that next up set of pipes never gets activated and it stays retained on the small pipe. Which is good. That's what we were just talking about. We've got we've got to add it. We've got to. We, I didn't see that. It was in another proposal. Yeah, we and we and I'm gonna be honest with you. When I edited it, I skipped it, and that's what I know. That's what I was asking Derek about, and that's what I was saying before the final draft hits the committee, the council today. The 25 year internal will be inside. The design will be. In when this. you do that, would you also you use it from? I mean, tonight you're going to introduce it at the parish council. But we'll adopt it at the at the pre. We're actually gonna we're actually gonna I'm gonna ask it to be introduced with to be adopted four weeks from now. Okay. Well, or f two meetings from now. I'm not give it because it's such a wrap because it is such a big change. I think that need the there needs to be more comment. You know what I'm talking about? I, I believe we're moving in the right direction, but there are people that that were here last two weeks ago that aren't here tonight. They need to know that this is coming okay. up, and they need to have the opportunity can to you, come speak. Can on. you do it off of the new ordinance that uh, that? Shows the ref that it's being sent to Munich. Yeah. Okay. I've got some clarifications on, and I'll talk about it briefly, but like the drain impact study, it says when they perform. To me, I think that should be date approved. Okay. Because and date perform is the date our engineer stamps it and submits it. That's not the date that the parish engineer approves. Everybody's the same page. Okay, so let's. Okay, we'll do. We'll we'll make that. That makes sense. We knew what we were. We knew what we were trying to do, and we didn't use the right term. So approved makes perfectly good sense. And then the part about the construction plan signed, I think that should be submitted because if I've got a set of plans submitted 100% complete to the new ordinances, I mean approval bar says 69 days. So wait on the signature. I mean there's ordinances that. Can I like that too because sometimes government shuts down for a week. But, but, yeah. You know, not that we do, but. I got you. I understand. Let's make that change too. So, so okay. So we're gonna we're gonna go from construction. So definition is gonna be submittal, and then and then we're gonna uh, and then we're gonna say approved. Okay. Hmm. I don't know what the definition. Means. The definition under construction for purposes regulation means the ODS has submitted construction plans and not signed. Yeah, the the definition is going to be submitted. Change the word. It's section from si from signed to submitted, and then yeah, and that is. Yeah, so so on K where we say expiration, Sandy, instead of drainage impact studies are applicable for twenty four months from the date performed, we're gonna say from the date approved. I got you. So, 
on court three would be more dense than two, correct? No, three would be less dense. Yeah, it'd be more dense. Three, three more dense. would be. I, so I'm inclined to stay with two. I mean, I, I know you okay, make so, money so, off of the so, land. So, so, Mr. Foster, what you're saying is, if we went 2.8, we wouldn't. We would not take into account. I mean, at two, we're taking into account roads and everything else. So that. Well, in this, in this, in this pick, typically, what we've done in our subdivisions when we have tied lot size to acreage. On a on a what we that definition of large lot subdivision is one lot per three acres in the development. So and then there was a limit on the minimum size, but we so we didn't require them all to be three acres. We put a minimum size in, and then if you had thirty acres, you could get ten lots. And we and the road and sewer plant and all that counted in the thirty acres. So under this definition, if you develop two hundred, if you develop a hundred acres. You could get 200 lots in it. You follow what I'm saying? And, 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 and if I on a strip along a parish road today, and I want to subdivide it, I thought, and I, I'm not putting any new sewer, I'm just an individual buying a lot on a house. The state allows me to have 16,000 square feet, which is meant to be 2.8. So okay. you got to consider when you define a lot, you're not just defining in a development definition, you're defining that lot in every definition of a lot in the parish. So we're trying to. Well, I know that, but effectively, you're taking what, so if somebody's got a piece of parcel on a road, they're not a developer, but they're a family partition, you effectively restricted what they were allowed to do currently under state sanitary code, so I just don't think it matches. So that broad definition of the lot applies to more than just a hundred acres of two hundred lots of the streets and community sewer. So that needs to be considered as you put that definition of lot across the whole parish. Okay. So there is requirements today that if families got three kids and they have a parcel, they legally can do it today with individual sewer, one house, not a subdivision. But and they could put 2.8 houses on there. Yeah. And, and, and we Actually, could. Actually, you could go smaller than that because remember it's like 10,000. No, it's 10,000 if there's it's 10,000 if there's sewer, if there's community well, sewer, so mechanical water reduction, reduction and 16. Uh, yeah, 16,000 on just regular, but but see a lot of parishes, a lot of parishes don't require water reduction. Livingston requires water reduction. There are parishes that don't require water reduction at that point in time. 16,000 is a minimum by state law. But but a couple of microphone if you go. <laughs> I, I, you thank you, give, you, give thank you Mr. Foster. Oh, oh uh, yeah, Mr. Foster, were you finished? I didn't mean to. Oh, we talked about the, the two per acre deal. If we did the 2.8 acre on these major developments, could we put something separate on those ones? Well, on I mean, so, so, so here, here's the deal. Here's the deal. If we're concerned about density, why are we concerned about density only in subdivisions and we're not well, concerned about. I mean, if we concern if we concerned about density, we concerned about density. So, what's it matter if 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 we want a house on no two houses on every acre? Why would we restrict a development developers' use of land and then allow an individual to do something different? I'm just saying if we're gonna, I mean, I understand the sanitary code and what it allows. However, we're not we're not con we're not we're not contradicting that. All we're saying. Is that in this parish, we don't want more than two houses on acre. I'm good with that. Okay. And so, and 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 and, and right, it should apply. It should apply to everybody. I mean, so look, y'all, y'all know y'all are getting. Them, the, 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 there's guys coming to you that want to subdivide a lot, and they want to put they cut an acre up four to four lots because if they put mechanical water reduction, they can. You know, Look, can basically I, it, do. it's a density section that you're at. Now, I'm yeah. is there anyone else that had something to say regarding this ordinance? Okay, if we could let the audience finish and then just, yeah, not that I'm, that's fine. let's let the audience finish. Uh, Mr. Jeremy, is that right? Yes. Jeremy Idell. Hey guys, got an accountant up here, so be easy on me. But, uh, so uh, Gary, um, what you said regarding density is actually my bullet point three on my, my talking points today. I think stricter density um, is absolutely necessary in this parish. And 
would support any efforts to do so. Um, but, you know, for, for development to get to my level, again, I, I keep my head down most of the time. For me to be brought to the, you know, everything that's in the news with the subdivisions and stuff, um, I, I sat there and read all 73 pages of your ordinances. And I, I, I tell you, they're, they're written very well. Um, we've just got some, a few issues in them. Uh, and and I, I think they're um, pretty um, uh, obvious um, that I'd like to talk about. So this is specific to large subdivision with improvements. Um, uh, section 125, 9-7 school impact studies. I'm not gonna, you know, you know, talk in detail there, but it, it, there's a there's a clause in there that says at the discretion of the council you can you can request that. Well, you know that's kind of after the fact that the planning is planning uh, committee's already approved it. Why why can't we, you know, request large develop developments to to have this prior uh, to be able to make that decision? Uh, I, can I? Sure. You're talking well, about as far as the it, it, now, this is directly. I know. Go ahead. Oh, this is. Go ahead. You're talking about as far as the schools. Correct. Really. Yes. So that's the, one of the items on the agenda itself, mm -hmm. which is what I'm going to talk about. Coming up at the okay. next meeting. And I'll talk about that. Okay. Well, good. But but just in general, I think it should be done. Uh, school traffic uh, drainage. Hey, we, we need we need to know the answer before it's approved. I, Okay, and, and, and again, that's just a simple accountant here talking. If, if we have developers, I call them investors, but uh, uh, developers that want to, you know, profit off of, you know, again, that's what they do. Um, they need to be able to, we need to know the answer prior to it getting to you guys. And then whenever your hands are tied, it's been approved, right? And, and you know, I know in Ascension, and this is probably not popular here, they're, they're actually gonna do the traffic studies and pay for them in advance just so they can hold, you know, they, they've got control of it. And I'm not saying we do that, but at the end of the day, we're gonna get better developments if we have the data in front of us ahead of time. And I know that costs the developer money and we have to be, you know, cognizant of that and aware of that. And I think there should be some verbiage in there that if there's no opposition in the planning commission you know, doesn't see it a bit an issue, they can waive it. I mean, but if there's a room full of people and it's 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 obviously an issue, you know, we we need to have those tools at our dis, you know, to be able to, to debate well in advance. So you know, to help you guys do what you're asked to do and and be the governing body of of Livingston Parish. And and and, and again, uh, seeing y'all have to answer question after question with, without the answer in front of you. Um, I just don't think it's fair to y'all. So um, I won't take the more of your time, but I think that's some common sense things that we can do right now that'll help us. Um, and uh, I don't know what it takes to do that. I mean, you've got a lot of moving parts right here. Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't know that we can do that all at once, you know. I, um, I, what I'm saying is um, I don't personally think it's the, the worst idea in the world that we do some type of uh, minimal moratorium to allow us to get all this stuff done. We've got zoning going on. We've got a lot of, of things that we need to, to, to get done here. Um, it was done in Ascension to, to a limited basis. They were successful there 15, 20 years ago with Tommy Martinez. And I know it's not a popular topic, but if we limit it to the things that we're having problems with, the subdivisions with improvements, and the smaller lots, then I think we can get a lot more done. Um, because my concern, again, I'm not, I'm talking from a citizen here, but I'm looking for a developer as well. You know, if we do some things that are gonna, you know, make developers not wanna invest here, you know, that's gonna be so costly uh, and, and swing the pendulum too far the other way, you know, I, I just think we need time to be able to, you know, Typically when you hit the pause button, you have a lot better information to make uh, informed decisions. So, so again, that's, a, that's my ask. And I know that uh, there's support for that to, to, to make those studies uh, you know, available in advance. And I think that's something you guys should really look into and whenever you're, you're making these changes uh, to the ordinances going forward. So 
Thank you. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Tracy, did you want to talk about his what, the school? No, we'll, we'll wait till we get to that part. Well, I you have, just, I okay. Have a question. I mean, okay, go ahead. That's the next item we're going okay. to talk, talk about on that. But um, we're going back to. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. You had something else? No, no. I'm, I'm That's good. it. Thank right. you so Thanks. much, Jeremy. Right. Um, Mr. Randy, you want to let him? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm go sorry. ahead. Go, go. Go ahead. Okay, we're still speaking about the same ordinance, right? That, that's what we own? Yeah. Oh, yes. I thought Gary did a great job of clearing up some confusion on the language and made a lot of us understand better what's going on. I'm going to propose some amendments to the ordinance, too. Do I do that in this committee meeting room, or do I do that? You know, this is the ordinance committee. If, if you can, okay. can, can you do it in this? I don't, I don't have it in written form. Just tell us. Time. Okay. I, mean, it will, Sam, I didn't we'll talk to any engineers or any of that, but I did talk to property owners in this past who are well concerned about the development that's going on. And I feel like we all the talking we did, we haven't really did anything to protect them yet. And one of their key points, I'm not going to repeat what Jeremy said, but the key point is all drainage, traffic, and school impact, including fire protection studies, should be done before the preliminary is even submitted to us. If we don't have that information, how are we going to vote on it? They're going to have to do it regardless. If we vote to say yes on the preliminary, they're going to have to do it anyway. If, if, if we don't have it, how do we know how it's going to affect those people? And Jeremy made a good point. If there's no opposition to it, maybe it, it could be waived at that time. But when there's got opposition, you got to have it. You have to have that input or that information to vote correctly. If we don't <clears throat> have that before us, then just leave it. Leave it before the planning commission. Don't even bring a preliminary to us. Let the planning commission do the things they're supposed to do. But if we don't have the information, we can't vote on it. That's 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 my first point, which is what he made. My second point is I feel like the developers who must own the property before they submit it to us. We have a submittal that nobody, the property hasn't even been sold. And we and we got opposition. This property hasn't been sold that p these people are concerned about. When that property comes before us to be developed, there should be an owner's name on there. Who's gonna do that development? Who's gonna do those things? Not just a surveyor's name or engineer's name, but who's gonna be the developer? Who's gonna build these homes? Who, who's gonna happen? We, we need to, uh, in my opinion, develop them a show a plan on how they're going to provide for fire protection. There's one that, Gary was at a meeting here a while back, there's one that got away from us in Springfield. They, there's no way they can provide fire protection. There's not enough water uh, volume, there's not enough water pressure. So they feel like they can pump out of the ponds, where well, that means they're going to have to uh, they're no longer retention ponds because they have to keep the ponds flooded for, for water protection. In addition to that, it's a thing with manpower. The fire protection deal is if you pump out of a pond, you gotta have shuttle trucks, you gotta have people all over the parish. But that leaves all the areas unprotected. You need to have fire hydrogens with the right property, especially when you're gonna have 400, 500, 600, 700, 800 homes. Because one home catches on fire, maybe three. You're going to build them that close together. Um, to me, that's another part. They, the, the things I'm talking about is how people talk. They talk like I do. You know, they don't, they don't know all these words and these fancy terms and that. They just know they need protection. And we need to take people that are intelligent enough, like our engineers, who have been good leaders. Derek's been a good leader for us. We, I think Gary has taken this ball and ran with it. He's carried the water. He's done a great job. I think it's a mesh of taking all of us together to make it right for the parish. We all can bring something to us. I have another pet peeve. This particular um, development here, uh, 700 homes, 800 homes, whatever you can believe, 900 homes on a small parish road like Jack Allen Road. I feel the entrance and the exits of those, they have to build a land road they can easily enter an exit from 444 or 42 or whatever. Do not put all this on us, you know, on the parish. Even if we're not going to be here four years from now, our predecessors will, and that just brings problems. So those are the things that I want to see, meaningful things, not just changing languages, but meaningful things about changing and helping development. 
I'm not against the moratorium, but that's an extreme measure to take. There's so many people depend on their livelihood that work in this parish that do this. But if the moratorium is what it takes to protect the people that's already here, then that's what I'm going to be for. But we need to take the stuff that we got control over of and approve it. And it's an ongoing process. Whatever we do, that somebody's going to find a loophole for it. And you got to continue this process. Thank y'all for giving me the time. Randy, Randy I, I want to I want to talk to you about something. So go ahead, Mr. Talbert. On a <laughs> on a commercial development, when you make the submittal, you submit a preliminary site plan, a traffic impact study that may be weighed by the planning director, or review engineer, and a public school impact statement in lieu of impact studies. The ODS shall submit a one-page description, preliminary plate flat site plan to the parish school board. On multifamily developments, you submit a preliminary site plan, a traffic impact study that may be weighed by the plan director, review engineer, and a public school impact statement. But on a subdivision, it's not required with the submit. So that's a, I mean, that's a consideration. Why do we require it on a commercial development? Why do we require it on a multifamily development? Yet we do not require it on a subdivision. It's, I mean, it's something we can take up the discussion, you know, but but our ordinance currently right now requires some of those submittals on certain deals prior to. So it's not like it's unprecedented to have a traffic impact study done <coughs> prior prior to a submittal. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. But So what he's saying is your first point of uh, has to come to us first. We're doing that now, aren't we? Not to we're, my doing it on, we're doing it on commercial not to my and multifamily. Knowledge. We're not doing it on subdivisions. So, would y'all want to consider adding that to into this section I mean, on subdivisions? Look, I, I I was addressing drainage within this thing. I mean, I, I, I sometimes ordinance can get overwhelmed with you know tons of different stuff. I mean, we can take it up on a different deal. Uh, I'm just saying that you know, look, I well just introduce it, Randy. Okay, do we have to introduce in a written form at a? At a what do you want? If, if you want to put something together, the next ordinance committee, I think we'll support it. You want okay. to do that? Yes. Okay. I just. I, I, if we do those things, we still have public hearings on it where Absolutely. people come Absolutely, in. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That, so you, that, you, that was my goal. If you'll just get with Miss Sandy and draft up a little order, what ordinance section you want to change and put it in there, I think we'll support that. Thank y'all for y'all. Thank, Thank you, Randy. No. Okay, Mr. Girlinghouse. Go, go ahead. No, I was just going before I shut the public. Mr. Okay, so I don't know. This, I guess it has to do with drainage and, and, and what you're talking. About. Do you think we should include the language where we had discussed previously about uh, a 20 foot buffer zone around? Well, I, 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 so, so that was a deal that, that, that thing with respect to retention ponds was emailed to somebody about Thank you. four weeks ago, two months ago. And I, I brought it up at the ordinance committee meeting when I wasn't on it. And I sent it to Miss Sandy today and asked if it wanted to be included on this one, and I don't think anybody took any action on it. But, yeah, I mean, ultimately, there needs to be some wording that says retention pond design, the, 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 the pond ordinance will be the design standard set forth in retention pond. We've already, they've already had a development that knows that's coming. Okay. Right? So what, Sandy? Well, you said. I didn't get an email from you today. Oh. I got one from well, yeah, okay, yeah, Lauren sent it on my behalf. Yeah, that's what I'm, I, I said me, so, and I meant Lauren sent it to you. So, uh, you know, we can, we can add that, what you're saying. Oh, absolutely. I mean, right, I, it's, it's, just, it's, just a, it's just a note that says that the retention pond design will meet the, the, the pond ordinance and retention pond design will be simultaneous. Because I think, the, I think developers have been told that because I got a call from a developer a while back that asked, you know, is the buffer zone such? I said, yeah, it's the same. And I also would like clear access to it, you know, like if there is a, 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 a you have to have a 20 foot lane to get to that pond. I don't want to have to come. I, I don't want, we have to have access to it. I don't want to use the outlet as the access. I got you. You know, that, which so, is, you know, uh, I think a lot of them do that. They use the, the outlet as the access and no, I won't. It doesn't have to be, you know, paved. It doesn't have to be gravel. It's just a clear lane of access. Well, we've and talked about we've talked about amending, you know, the the how retention ponds are handled, not with design, but with respect to how they're going to be addressed in the future. And so I didn't, I didn't, I know because it's it's wide open as how we going to like 
how are we going to fund if we if we change ownership? How are we going to fund it? You know, we we talked well, about all those things, and so I just didn't I just addressed design with respect to retainage, you know, and how we were releasing water in this thing. Yeah, yeah we 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 can do whatever. Tracy, do you I want mean, to put that in this ordinance, or do you want to wait? Well, I'm asking it? I'm asking Gary, can if if it's if you think it's applicable. To I mean, this. it's it's. I mean, I guess we could do it. I, it's just not really that big a deal if we just introduce it. Yeah, we could just. I mean, I, look, I'm actually. It, you could introduce it two weeks from now, and they'd both be voted on the same time. Because I'm going to yeah. ask that we have a we we have a two meeting review of this thing, not not just a one one review. Fair so, enough. Okay. All right, Mr. Murphy. I just wanted to mention one thing. Uh, we have been just so y'all know putting a 15 foot servitude around all all detention ponds. So an act like a 15 foot access entrance into that would be great. As they yeah. uh, they also have been wanting us to do. Uh, we've been chamfering. In other words, putting 45s in there for all the servitudes and that kind of stuff so a truck could turn and do some different things. So that's already being done, but I don't know if it's codified or not. But so for the last probably five years, they've been requiring all those access. Uh, but not just gravity, but affording a lot of a parish. Uh, last thing. Um, so basically, a, a motion to send this ordinance uh, with a recommendation from the ordinance committee to the parish council with the changes that you spoke about and since you're not going to introduce it yes. tonight, no, we're going to introduce yes. it tonight we're just going to set up we're going to set it up with a public hearing in public two meetings hearing. two meetings yeah. well that, that's fine but can can you get us a complete me, copy? And, me and me and miss me and miss somebody getting ready to walk to the back and i mean work uh, it. so i know you can't have it for tonight oh yeah we can have it we have a complete copy we're gonna fix it tonight it's easy. with all this stuff i got the flash drive. i got the flash it's just too it's just okay. it's pretty simple uh, i got the flash drive with me okay that's fine that's fine i just well, i'd like to get it where it's, it's all done um so is there a motion to send this to the ordinance to the chair council yeah, no go ahead shane you can make it i'm good i like it i think it's motion by mr mac i'll second both second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? None. The next item, uh, ordinance to establish the uh, establishing authority to the Livingston Parish School Board in regard to impact studies. This was placed over here by Mr. Gerlinghouse. Yes. Um, I, having looked at the way and, and heard from uh, my school board representative, I think there needs to be a, a mechanism mechanism in place to where uh, the school board or the, the local school district should have some say on how, you know, can they accept, you know, if you put in a 700 home or what, you know, any kind of development of any size in, uh, can the school afford, you know, can, do they have the space for that? Um, now, I don't know how, I haven't had a meeting with them yet. I, I set the meeting up for Tuesday of next week. So I'm gonna meet with the school board then and we're gonna throw some ideas around on how we wanna approach that. I do, you know, don't necessarily wanna put you know, the, the, the whole weight of yes or no on them, but that we had to come up with a system um, to where you know, they have to, it has to go to them before they have to they're going to have to hire some firm to go in and, and, and access the, uh, and interact with the school board this is my thoughts ahead of time uh, interact with the school board and say hey you know we're going to put this development in this district you know uh, can you can well, you well, handle well, this type of load and you know uh, whether you know how we how we would approach that or not we're going to we're going to throw some ideas around I, i've talked with mr murphy the superintendent and um um, and he and he seems open to the idea um, you know don't necessarily want to you know hurt the development but at the same time the schools have to be able to uh, have to be able to function you know I, I know like in my community you know, the, my school system in Walker that you know it's kind of the pride of our community and I, we just don't want to see it degraded just by sure numbers you know so you know if there's in and there can be an impasse you know you, they could uh, offer assistance or if you know if, if the development is too big you know or you know it's going to negatively impact the school system because the money they get from the state for the students never offsets the total cost you know and so we need to be very careful going forward how 
you know, you just can't keep putting students in class and building, and you know, keep stuff you know, because it, you can't keep adding to the equation in the school system because at some point the overall education starts to be diminished. And I don't want to see that in my community, and I know no no one else in their community wants to see that either. So, you know, we're just going to discuss some ideas with them, whether it's you know, uh, uh, whether it's some kind of uh, impact fee or or you know, or just you know routes where they have to come to them and this is something we, i want to do pre um when submittal so you know when, when they when they come to planning they're going to have to have that you know that that understanding that recommendation of something from the school board. that's my initial thoughts on that after you meet with them would you consider putting together y'all's thoughts on paper and then consider a correct way to word it and bring it to this ordinance uh, i mean i'm not I'm absolutely going to do that. Okay. I mean, that, you know, right. I, uh, <laughs> and, Mr. and the second thing is this, too. Mr. Dwight, go and, ahead. And Come on it's, uh, just to fill it in, too, we um, also want to meet with, uh, and this just occurred, so uh, I have a meeting Tuesday afternoon with uh, the fire department, with, uh, with the, uh, the fire chiefs, FPD4, FPD5, and maybe a couple other ones because I talked to my representative, and we're going to do, uh, we're going to talk about in a way an ordinance that we can frame, uh, we can frame to help, you know, with the water supply and how how we can how can we can fund that mechanism to where you won't have these you know these dry hydrant types you know you just have the pressure we have the same issue going on in Walker now with one of the developments where they just don't have the water there you know to, to supply for that so um same issue same problem so we you know where i have so i have a meeting set up with that and and uh any if you want if you're welcome to attend if you want if you want to come it's you know so i, I just wanted for my own clarification uh, uh when you're talking about the school it was my understanding there's an employee that's hired and reports directly to uh, superintendent murphy that's responsible for the school impact studies already and I was, I was told that that employer has a lack of guidance from us. We don't, we, you know, he's saying what kind of impact, anything's impact, you know. So we need, he didn't know, and maybe I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but he didn't know what time this report had to be, who he had to give the report to, you know, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Like, I think we want that for a preliminary and not, after the construction is done i think that report we want to see that report i think you know well that's what it, that's what i just it, said yeah, yeah. you know we're going to get it before before it even gets to planning it's going to have to have that they're going to have to have that to submit but that report's a one-page report now that goes to superintendent murphy's desk and he's the only one that's seeing that report currently and that's you that know was that the point that's the point of clarification. No, who are you talking about? No, but I mean, you know, if can if, you find out and maybe? Well, sure, but I guess I, my I don't question want to call that the was name, a, but they, been, I think it was in a paper, and the salary amount was in a paper too. So. Thank I you, just man. say that there, there's been, and it, we know if that's the case, then there's been very little back and forth on it at all, because this is the first I've heard. It's no and, communication from. Well, you know, that's what I'm trying to resolve right. now. They, right. if if the schools are being impacted negatively, then I. We're, I I believe as a council, we need to give them some skin in the game. Yes, I agree. Like to agree. One second. So, Tracy, you had no more action. You don't want to take action on that tonight. No, no, no. Okay. I was just, this was just to let you know us. this okay. is where I'm going with the school board and one with second. the fire departments. And I'm we, planning to meet with the water department. Too. We have one more item left on the agenda. Hey, can, uh, I, can, I come in, can I come in on Tracy's? Can I come what's in? that? Well, I was going to let you come up and start your, on yours as well. You don't want to talk about it tonight? Well, okay. whatever, my name's Gerald McMorris, but I represent everything south of the interstate here on District 6. So when, when we go before this board here, we need to understand everybody on... What board? What? Uh, what uh, do go, I know? We said we go before this board. You, when, whenever we go before the school board. Oh, school board, okay. Yeah. We got to understand as people and developers and engineers out here that everything south of the interstate is jam-packed. Frank Settlement, Frost, Marpaul, we we in T buildings. You know why? I told them last night in our, in our meeting at the town hall. It's because we don't have the revenue coming in. As all the big, big, you know, walkers. And, right, but right. just like Walker, you guys could build another school on this side of the interstate. 
and probably fill it up in a heartbeat, right? That's things we need to look at. How are, how are these developers going to help us? Is it adding two more wings to a school? Be, be a good thing, right? Yeah, they could help us out. Well, so, and, and look. So that's something we need to discuss. I, I would love to sit in with that meeting, uh, if possible. Yeah, Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. <gasps> <laughs> Not that much. Hey, look, man. <laughs> I do, but I, 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 have, I have another job. I feel I have you. Work to, right? I'm, I'm the same I know way. You do. And you know, and, uh, I, you know, so I feel I'll it's be, the I'll same way. I'll make sacrifices. I'll be there. Okay. Okay. Uh, Tuesday morning. Just call me. And just I, don't and let I, my boss know that. All right. Okay? But uh, <laughs> let, that's something we need to discuss as as a uh, as leadership here to protect the people to make sure we got enough room for the kids. And I agree with you 100. percent Okay. Do you thank you. So you do. You want to pull your item tonight? Yeah, I defer our bank calls. We're gonna. Well, we can. He wants it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Mr. Talbot, you had a quick question. Oh, I was just gonna note that um, Monday morning we had a meeting, ten o'clock, in 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 the governmental building at the the downstairs conference room with. Uh, you know, water company engineers, representative from Walker Water, uh, City of Walker, uh, fire departments with respect to uh, our current ordinance and some problems. I mean, we've got a we've got a approved subdivision that has got fire hydrants in it that don't quite meet the standard of a fire hydrant minimum. And so, yeah, the fire department is actually gonna is is looking at a couple things, and we're gonna they were supposed to reach out to you. Uh, about Me? Get, yeah about about working on an ordinance to uh, because our, our current ordinance is kind of antiquated, it uh, it doesn't it doesn't address some of the needs that that, that exist and um, so you know they uh, I told them I'd help them because I'd done some research on, on you know what what you know NFP one and some other I have stuff. a meeting with them at eleven on Tuesday so if you want to be there with oh, gotcha. that sounds like a winner okay uh, you've already spoken Scooter all right go ahead come on the last. I had a little meeting with the school board president, Cecil Harris, uh, last week. Okay. And he came in with his hat in his hand. He said, please, y'all do a moratorium on building. We cannot handle this. Oh, the school board said that. The school board president came to me. And I said, well, Cecil, that ain't exactly, you know, the way we want to operate. And he goes, man, we, we're fighting it every day. We got trying to keep the standards high, and, and they're going to go down if we keep just overloading our school system. He said, can y'all institute a fee? You know per lot to help build these new schools make them bigger and i said well that's something we need to look at and tracy what you're doing is going to get us in that position and it, when the school board president is begging say guys y'all got to stop it's time to do something about well, look look uh, we, we got great schools in our parish we do. dude have y'all looked at the percentage of the village that goes to schools and the percentage of lot. sales tax i mean it's a ton so look i mean it's just hard to keep up here. That's dude, dude, we we can't clean ditches because we don't have funding for it. I mean, so let's I'm with you. let's I mean let's don't let's don't promote other people's revenue. Let's get let's get some for us. I mean I mean let's be honest. We need to do both, but well, but but he's right. We are woefully unfunded, you know. And when people, I mean we got two point three two mills. It's not the dedicated parish. to something. That's it. Yep. To operate anything. This I mean we got mandated crap that we got to pay four out of 2.32 mills all i'm telling you we we, have, we need to quit promoting other people's revenue and try to get us some That's thank all you I Mr. look we have uh, about 15 minutes before the livingston parish council is going to meet so i'd like to uh close this out meeting out for the ordinance committee um and in doing that let me just say this last thing and this will be the last comment um we can hold these high standards, require schools to have impact studies, uh, require developers that they're not going to build these big subdivisions until these schools and drainage and traffic and all these things we spoke about tonight. But we've got to be able to look at developers from up here and say no. So I'm just saying that we're going to have to stand up and say no, you're not going to do it until all these things are met. So is there a motion to adjourn? Motion by Mr. Motion. Mack, second by Mr. Girlinghouse. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries.